One of the ways you can add interactivity to your PDF documents is by adding buttons. Buttons can execute script and perform commands and actions for the user when they're clicked. We're looking at the file jurassic.pdf, which is located in the working files. If you recall from previous videos, this is a presentation that was converted from Microsoft PowerPoint. What we want to do is add some buttons to this presentation to help guide the user through the content. Perhaps they're not quite familiar with working with Acrobat or Reader, and we want to give them a visual assist. Or better yet, we may want to provide these buttons for navigation while they are in full screen mode. We can add a button simply by clicking on the Add Button tool, which is located in the Tools pane in the Interactive Objects category. We click on Add Button, and we can see a floating crosshair with a ghost image of a button. We'll want to click and drag out a rectangle. When we have it sized appropriately, we can release the mouse button and we get a visual representation of the button here, and it's asking us for a field name. Now, this is something that programmers might need to use to control buttons and actions within JavaScript. Having this field name will allow you to gain access to this button from within your JavaScript. We'll call this Next Page. And we'll click on All Properties to open up the Properties dialog box. Here we see the name that we just gave it, and we can add a tooltip if we'd like. Click to go to the next page. If we go to the Appearance section, we have no border and a gray fill color, and that's exactly what we see here, although it's a bit obscured at the moment by the selection outline. We can add text to this button to identify its purpose, and here is where we select the font, color, and size. We'll leave them set at the default for now. In the Options tab, we can add the label. What we'll do is click here and type the same words, Next Page. When we close this dialog box, we'll see that text on our button. The final thing we need to do is to assign an action for our button to actually make it do something. We saw actions in an earlier video when we learned how to add links to our document, and actions for buttons work much the same way. Buttons have a trigger which causes the action to happen, and that trigger can be a variety of cursor events, mouse up, mouse down, mouse enter, and so forth. For a typical button action, you'll most likely want to use mouse up. This event occurs after you click on a button, when the mouse button is released. Now for the action, the default is to execute a menu item, but as you can see from this drop-down list, there are quite a few types of actions you can assign to your button. For example, when we looked earlier at links, we used the action to go to a page view, or to open a web link, or even to open a file. In this case, we'll go ahead and use the default, execute a menu item, and when we click on Add, it adds the action and we'll need to choose the menu item that we want. You can see here virtually every menu item within the program. We want this button to perform View Page Navigation Next Page. We'll click on that, and then we'll click on OK, and we see that this action has been added to the list here. At this point, we can add more actions, and our button can do many things at the same time. In fact, you can see here that this action is a mouse up action. Besides adding more mouse up actions, we can add other actions for mouse over, mouse down, the sky is the limit. We'll leave this set to this one action for now, and we'll click on Close. If we switch to the Hand tool, we can see our button, and we can test it by hovering over it. Notice the cursor changes, and notice the tooltip appears. When we click, it goes to the next page, exactly what we wanted. Now let's take this to the next level. This is a rather plain looking button, and in fact the text doesn't even fit on it. We can make this look even more interesting. The way we modify objects on our page is with the Select Object tool here in the Interactive Objects panel. When we click on our object with the Select Object tool, we see the borders highlighted, and we can drag to change the size so that the text fits. We can also right-click in Windows or Control-click on a Mac and bring up the object's context menu, and from here we can choose Properties. When we do, we get back to the same dialog box we were in a moment ago. 
We'll leave the action set as it was, but over here in the Options tab, rather than have a label, we'll choose to have an icon. An icon is an image, so rather than having the words on a gray box, we'll actually choose an icon. And we'll browse to the working files in the Chapter 5 folder. At the moment, all we see here is PDF files, and we'll need to change the files type. We'll choose PNG. We have a left and a right arrow PNG file, and we'll choose arrow right PNG and click on Open. Here's the icon, and when we click on OK, we have our icon ready for the button. We'll go back to Appearance, and we don't really need the gray fill color anymore, so we'll change the fill to No Color. So now we have no stroke and no fill, and also no text, but we do have the button image and the tooltip. We'll click on Close, and we'll switch back to the Hand Tool once again. There's our arrow button, and if we hover over it, we see the tooltip and the cursor changes. We click, and sure enough, it works. What we want to do now is to copy this button onto all the pages of our presentation, except for the last page. Notice that we have seven pages in this presentation, so pages one through six will need a next page button. You might think copy and paste is the way to go, but there's a much better solution. Let's go back to the Select Object tool, and we'll highlight this button. When we right-click or Control-click on Mac to bring up the context menu, notice one of the options is Duplicate Across Pages. When we choose this, we can choose to duplicate this to every page or a range of pages. What we really want is to have the next page icon on pages 1 through 6. Obviously, we don't need that on page 7. We'll click OK, and we'll go back to the Hand Tool. And now, clicking the button, we can work our way through the document from one page to the next. And when we get to the last page, there's no Next Page button, and we don't have a next page in the document. This is exactly what we wanted. The next thing we want to do is create a previous page button. So we'll go back to page one. Now we don't need a previous page button on page one, so we'll go to page two and we'll start from there. We'll create a previous page button by modifying this next page button. We'll use the Select Object tool and we'll select this button. Now we can press Control C on Windows or Command C on a Mac and then Control V on Windows or Command V on a Mac to paste the new button into the document. We can move this over near the other one. We'll shift click to select both of them, making sure that the original button is the one with the darker border. Then we'll bring up the context menu and we'll choose Align, Distribute, or Center, and we'll choose Align Bottom. This will bring them into alignment with boldly highlighted button taking precedence. Now we'll click away to deselect, and then we'll click on just the new button to modify its appearance and behavior. This will need to be a left-facing arrow with a tooltip of previous page and a corresponding action, but right now it's exactly the same as the existing button. We can bring up the context menu and choose Properties. But here's a shortcut. If we just double click with the Select Object tool, we go straight to the Properties dialog box. Under General, we'll change the name to Previous Page, and we'll edit the tooltip accordingly. We don't need to change anything in the Appearance section, but in Options, we want to change our icon. We want a left facing arrow. So we'll browse back into the Chapter 5 folder change our file type to PNG, and we'll choose arrow left.png. We'll click on OK, and now we have a left-facing arrow. We'll click on OK again, and we're good there. The last thing we'll want to do is to change the action. Right now, this action executes a menu item that takes us to the next page. We'll need to highlight the action, execute a menu item, and choose Edit. Notice that if you choose the menu item itself, Edit is grayed out. But if we choose Execute Menu Item and click Edit, we can change the menu item. We'll choose View, Navigation, Previous Page, and we'll click on OK. We've changed our action, 
and we've changed our button image to point in the other direction, and we've changed the name and the tooltip. Now we can click on Close, and we can test it out by switching to the Hand tool. When we hover over this, we see the tooltip, and when we click, sure enough, it works just fine. For the last step, we'll go back to page 2, and using the Select Object tool, we'll highlight our previous page button. We'll right-click and choose Duplicate Across Pages. In this case, we want this to be duplicated from page 2 through page 7. We'll click on OK, and it's done, just as simple as that. So now we can go back to page 1 and choose the Hand tool, and we can test our buttons. We can navigate forward one page at a time, all the way to the end of the document. And then we can navigate back all the way to the beginning of the document. So it works just the way that we planned. Now here's a bonus. If we press Ctrl L on Windows or Command L on a Mac to enter full screen mode, we can see our buttons and they are active and work perfectly within the full screen display of our presentation. We can click to go to the next page and we can click to go to the previous page. As an exercise, try creating a new button that exits from full screen mode. Copy that button across all the pages in this PDF. That would be a nice touch for helping anyone viewing your document in full screen mode. As a hint, to do this with a menu command, it would actually be a toggle to enter or leave the full screen mode. Give it a try. Adding buttons to your PDF is just as simple as that.